Aloha, and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii's program, Don't Just Age, Engage, where you're challenged to grow and to en en embrace your aging as one of the most wonderful experiences of your life. I'm Larry Grimm, your host for today's program, and we're on program at two o'clock Hawaii time every two, every second Tuesday. So two weeks from to now, we'll be back with you with another exciting and wonderful look at what it is to age and to engage as you do so. I don't want you to be a victim of aging. Many of us do enter this aging and we think, well, I'm just going to give myself over to my aging body and not do anything about it. And what can I do? And but there's a world of things that you out there for us to do to engage so that we're growing and we're prospering and thriving into an extraordinary elderhood. You had a childhood, you had an adolescence and, a, and an adulthood and your adulthood, you were productive, you were creative, you made families, you made businesses. And now you're moving into your elderhood, which is a new opportunity for a new kind of spirituality and celebration of life. What do you do with that? What kind of wonderful opportunities are available to you here in, in uh, Honolulu and on the island of Oahu in particular? I asked for, for uh, I asked um, Merle O'Neill uh, if she would come and answer that question. What opportunities are available for an exciting and engaging elderhood? Merle O'Neill, thank you for coming from Waikiki Community Center and being a part of this Wonderful discussion. Thank you, Larry. It's a pleasure for me to be here talking with you about the, um, the active aging program here at the Waikiki Community Center. Terrific. Merle, I, I always ask to begin my client, my uh, uh, interviewees to begin with some kind of personal story about how you got to this place in your life. Why does uh, this particular population segment interests you. Um, what is it that has brought you in this journey to this place and to this time? Will you share that with us? Sure. Larry, um, I was born and raised in Uwanu, and I grew up in a three-generation household with my grandfather being uh, the patriarch, my parents, and then, of course, we were in the kid group. We were in the kid group. And our family, I was fortunate in that uh, my family has a, a history of long life, longevity. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that I believe might be unique to our family, not only are there entrepreneurs, but um, retire, the word retire is not in our vocabulary. <laughs> so my grandfather literally worked to the last day did he and really? on that day, he died. My goodness. How yes. Is... So he came home with a cold, walked from downtown Honolulu to Nu'uanu to our home and um, said he wasn't feeling well, laid down. And by 10 o'clock that evening, he was gone. Peacefully. Well, nobody really, there was never any uh, major incident, no emergency. Um. I went to school here. I'm a graduate nurse, an educator, an entrepreneur. I'm a nonprofit executive as well as manager, program manager. I've been a caregiver. That sums it up and all the credentials come with it. That's wonderful. So, thank you. So back in uh, 2015, I was asked to join the staff of the Waikiki Community Center to design a program for a concept called active aging. And uh, that's for, you know, our target audience at the time was 50 plus and still is actually. And the program was called Thriving After 50. I didn't do a great job at branding it. So it's, you know, not, not a commonly understood world, word. So my question is at what age do we start thinking about aging? And it probably starts in childhood when I can, you know, I can personally relate to that because, you know, here was, here were my grandparents that were well into their 90s before they actually de departed their bodies. And um, I came home uh, after, after a 30 year stay in California 
to take care of my mother, who was totally self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. um, and she passed away at 101. So I have a very long um, history in my family of, of people that live long. My aunt, my mother's sister, passed away at 104. Her other sister passed away at 102. My, so my goodness. My mother was actually the shortest lived of the sisters. Oh. Anyway. Uh -huh. Well, it seems to me also you had the advantage of that, a closeness to the cycle of life, a closeness to the, to the uh, experience of aging and all that that involves for uh, an individual, those individuals whom you loved and you watched, you walked the journey with them as you did the rest of your family and exactly. the rest of your siblings. And I, I'm, I have to bemoan the fact that so many of us in these days didn't get that experience. And we were so grateful as boomers to have the ability to travel and yet the ability to travel, to choose where to go to live our lives also puts us at a distance from one another and a distance physically so so that we don't get a chance to experience that change the transformation and it's not just physical it's a transformation that is deeply spiritual as well as physical and um and to know and, and to benefit from that as we then move into that elderhood ourselves so you bring a wonderful and, and very very valuable look at aging to the community, Merle, because not all of the community has the opportunity to look at aging the way that you have. And w what is this active aging that you wanted to... to that... well, before, before I talk about that, I'd like yeah. to talk about what you mentioned about being fortunate to be um, uh, matriculated really in real life, in real time, about what it is to age. Because in our, in our household, there were individuals of all ages. And so aging seemed uh, relatively normal. Now, when I was in California for 30 years and my children were in, at the university here, they lived with my mother and cared for my mother. So they too have, how they, how they developed that, I'm not really sure, but they took on uh, the responsibility of remaining with her. They weren't asked they just decided that that's what they needed to do. So yes. it's, it's a value that, you know, that runs in the family. Yes. And like you said, not all people, um, you know, have that opportunity. Yes. Well, and Merle, having worked for uh, hospice care here uh, in my chaplaincy work with Bristol Hospice, Hawaii, I did encounter that as a value in many families and, I, and somewhat almost culturally va uh, esteemed value. Um, I have my, uh, uh, I take voice lessons from uh, Buzz Tennant, and he came back from Germany to uh, take care of his parents, his aging parents. That was the only reason he came back. And yep. uh, so and many he, people do that here, regardless yeah. of ethnicity, although in some, in some uh, cultures, it's ingrained in the, in the culture itself. But I also noticed that many um, uh, culture individuals of of different cultures that don't have that necessarily or is not so obviously, um, you know, holding that as a value, do come home no matter yes. where they are in the world, which is, you know, quite interesting and fortunate for our community. I uh, wanted to share with you that when I approached, when I approached the age of uh, 50, and then on to 65, I have to admittedly say that I was in total denial of my age. <laughs> so when people ask me how old you are, I wouldn't tell them, um, primarily because I was in denial and I told them that. Mm -hmm. However, um, recently with you know, the awareness of, uh, particularly my spiritual awareness, um, I really grappled with that concept of aging and the things that I grappled with were things that, you know, of course we hear all the time as older adults, we're incompetent, we're debilitated, we're not, you know, up to par, you know, 
and we don't hold the position in the community as we did while we were while we were maturing and while we were actively working. Um, and the other thing is just the angst of being older. Uh -huh. You know, my body aches, I have things going on, I have to do more now to just keep myself fit. Yes. Uh, it seems at least, you know, it seems to be, it kind of fits in that category called struggle. Well, more so than it used to be. More so than you, it used to be. So I think that, you know, one of the things that occurred to me is that that's the reality and I need to learn to accept it. Mm -hmm. And in the front end of that process, um, acceptance uh, looked like submission, submission to the reality that I was getting ah, older. Ah, now I look at acceptance ah, as um, a way of receiving an opportunity and doing something about it. I'm in control of my aging. And I, you know, I finally at some point got that. And um, <laughs> I mean, I guess, you know, it should be right working with older adults, but somehow I was still in denial. But just recently I did come to the conclusion that um, I have an opportunity here. I mean, I always felt like I had an opportunity. My life purpose has always been about uh, serving others and sharing love, you know. Yeah. Consistent with the Aloha spirit. Merle, I want to, I want to re, restate what you have just said that I think is so important. And that is that acceptance is not surrender. It's not submission. It's not resolving into being a, a victim, but rather it's seeing, reframing your life in such a way that it has a wonderful opportunity and a, a, a uh, wonderful um, uh, uh, things before you, whatever they may be. And it doesn't have to be the same kind of activity that you've done in the past, but it, it is a new presence of, of awareness within yourself of what, who you are and what you're about. Um, right. I have, I have one phrase that I really like. It's a book um, that I, I um, my denomination, Presbyterian church, I'm a Presbyterian pastor and my denomination, and had a program called Moving from Role, R-O-L-E, to Soul, S-O-U-L. So I think this is a kind of spiritual shift that, that really, that little phrase captures the spiritual shift of movement between these two stages of life. And, exactly. and, you, and you stated it so well, acceptance is not a movement from um, activity to, to uh, victimhood. It's a movement of accepting that there's a new life and a new and a change and something of great value and worth. So take us into what else you want to share. I want to add one more piece to that. Um, okay. One more piece to that is that um, acceptance is not about being a victim, but being a hero for your story. <laughs> great. So I choose to be a hero and I choose to have the work that I do shared among others who may not have had the um, the background ed education or experiences that um, has caused me to be here today. Beautifully expressed. Beautifully so expressed. Um, when I joined the Waikiki Community Center, um, I was asked to I was asked to produce this program called Active Aging, and um, I did my research, you know, like we all do. Mm -hmm. uh, do my do my I did my research and I discovered a white paper written by Dr. Cullen Hayashida, who is a gerontologist and um, has for many, many, many years uh, worked on issues related to aging. He's a uh, 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 has a doctorate from the University of Hawaii. Uh, did his undergraduate, I think, at the University of Washington, has written many papers, developed <clears> programs, <throat> and is the founder of the, um, the uh, Kupuna, Kupuna uh, Center at Kapiolani Community College. Ah. And to this day, he continues his work and his effort. Um, 
marvelous. Back in back when I first met Cullen, which is about seven years ago, uh, he talked about there was a lot of conversation in the legislature about the aging community. And the estimate was that 20% of our population would be 65 or older by 2030. Well, here's the 2020 census. We're at 19.6%. This is 2030 now they're projecting it for. And in Waikiki, we're at 20%. Wow. So 20% of our population in Waikiki is over 65. And just keep yeah. in mind that yeah. our programs are targeted to 50 plus. Yes. Yes. So Super. Dr. Hayashida, like I said, um, wrote this paper and basically what he said to the legislators and to the state, there is no way that we can sustain sick care for our older adults. And so we have to look at another alternative. And that alternative is to extend the healthy lifehood of our older adults. And so Excellent. how do we do that? Um, Excellent. Yes. So um, if I can have the the uh, the model, the circle, the wheel, Michael. There it is. So active aging is a lifestyle that acknowledges that even as we age, we have the capacity to grow, contribute, engage during our natural lifespan. The goal is to increase our healthy life expectancy beyond retirement our healthy life expectancy beyond retirement. So if you look at the graphic mm -hmm. on active aging, you see all the, the sections or the facets. So let's start at the very top at 12 o'clock on the graphic and look at this concept called lifelong learning and development. And what I will do is walk through all the programs that are being offered at the Waikiki Community Center that address these facets and how we go about doing that. that As an example, good if we can do it. go ahead. Mm -hmm. just, just that you keep the pace up for us so we can get through it all. We have 15 okay. more minutes. I'll, I'll be quick. Um, okay, good. I'll, I'll be as quick as I can. I know. Um, I know lifelong I learning and development. So examples, we did success tips on aging with Dr. Greg Ewan. Uh, we did the history of Waikiki with Peter Apo. We offer, also offer things like ukulele, hula, writing, English as a second language and more. And we also take our, our adult, older adults on tours that we talk about the history of the islands and the, and the kingdom of Hawaii and on and on and on. We Excellent. do technology training and Zoom and cell phone com and computer use training. On the, in the area of community, we have many projects, but the projects I'm most excited about are our active civic engagement projects. We did Waikiki Safe Walk where we monitored the uh, the quality and the uh, the quality of our sidewalks, the traffic lights, the traffic, the people speeding through Waikiki, the skateboarders, etc. We followed that with something called Waikiki Safe, where we attempted and we continue to do this to train our, especially our older adults in Waikiki, on disaster preparedness. On the area of family and relationships, we have many social activities, painting, games, tours, um, in the area of finances and legal issues, the University of Hawaii uh, Richard Sood School of Law has uh, shared with us um, frequently uh, how to plan for your future, wills, estate planning, um, advanced care directors, directives, and in financing, we usually find um, you know a financial advisor that's willing to come and do a presentation for us. Um, health and fitness is pretty 
you know, logical. Zumba, Pilates, yoga, hula, line dancing, etc. Spirituality, that area, well, I'll call on you, Larry, to talk about that because Larry's going to be a special guest presenter over three sessions. In regards to housing, we've brought people in about home modifications um, in the area of paid work, unpaid work and volunteerism. Like I said, I go back to the civic engagement projects where we literally called the whole community in to participate as volunteers. We even did sidewalk patching with the city. You know, talk Wonderful. about proactive, but all of these have, have begun because our older adults have brought to us complaints of the street situation in Waikiki. Mm -hmm. So we just put projects together and move towards activism and see if we can make for a more age-friendly Waikiki. Well, you've listened to the, to the people and you're responding with programs in that whole circle of life that uh, are meaningful to the community and to individuals. And, um, and it sounds to me, Merle, like your programming takes shape around those, those complaints or those interests as they get expressed and, and the ones yes the ones that we get when when we start to bring in not only our community of older adults uh -huh. but we literally partner with organizations we partner with volunteer groups with KCC with the University of Hawaii School of Social Work with Wonderful. you know the city of Honolulu planning department so whatever it takes, we try to find collaborators because what we're attempting to do is to build a, a force for change. Now, I can't say that I, we've, I can't tell you how uh, well we've done, except that our, um, our community of older adults know that when they bring a complaint to me, that it's likely gonna turn into something else. Terrific, so terrific. The other thing I wanted to point out in the area of community is that we've initiated a project called Ibasho, I-B-A-S-H-O, and it is a concept of community. I see the sign. A concept of community um, developed by, um, after the tsunami in Japan, the typhoon in the Philippines and the earthquake in Nepal. And it's creating a place of belonging mm. where older adults are honored and respected and uh, expected actually to become involved in their community uh -huh. with intergenerational activities. But it's wholly wholly uh, guided and run by the older adults. As Excellent. the representative at the community center, I'm just holding the space and providing, uh, providing space. So we're at the beginning of this uh, process to build a community within a community. Excellent, Merle. That's, you're such a visionary. And then you also make sure things get done. That's great. I would like to plug my own pro, uh, program with you. Three, yeah, talk, uh, talk about your talk about the spirituality. Three three Build Wednesdays, again. three Wednesdays in April. The first three Wednesdays in April, I'm I'm intrigued that we have in our stage of life a, a unique uh, spirituality, and it has to do, and my program has to do with five spiritual tasks of aging, which help in, help you to incorporate uh, a, a new life and to have an extraordinary elderhood. So I'm going to address those April 7th, 14th, and 21st at one o'clock, I think it is, and uh, yes. the Waikiki Community Center. Merle, this exactly. has been so wonderful. And, and not only have we not, have we seen the program uh, ideas that you bring forward, but we also see the rationale beneath it and, the, and to understand the rationale. And actually, I can imagine an elder adopting that circle of life for their own mirror and to look in that in the mornings and say, well, what am I, I going to focus on today? 
which what? piece of the pie am I going to consume today? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And and what do I what do I need from that? And what do I want from that? And uh, what are some goals that I can set in each one of those pieces of pie and yes. enjoy? That's just so so helpful, Merle. Well. Do you have to be a, uh, live in Waikiki to enjoy your... No, no. The programs actually is open to anyone who lives on Oahu. So we <laughs> oftentimes have people that cross the Pali in order to participate in our programs. Wow, no, you great. don't have to. And you don't have to be a member per se. Now we have actually, there's a special discount going on for... Um, what we call, we don't call them members anymore. Um, and what happens is that if you purchase this, this annual membership, uh, your programs, your participation in um, exercise programs, activities, et cetera, is discounted. This so, is a wonderful yeah. opportunity. And, uh, and I, uh, I think that it, we're wise to put that in our, package of, of uh, resources that we have for our lives. Merle, exactly. thank you so very much. You have been a delight to listen to. And um, the Waikiki Community Center is a tremendous resource for ourselves and our community. And I'm sure there are many who will, as a result of this, begin to tune in and to participate and take advantage of what you so beautifully have constructed here. Thank you. I, and thank could I you. plug in our website? Could I mention that? Sure. Go ahead. One more time on the website. Okay. Website, www.waikikicommunitycenter.org. Very simple. Spell it all out. We look forward to seeing you. And please let us know that you uh, came as a result of Larry's program. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you for you. the opportunity, Larry. I really do appreciate this. You're very welcome, Merle. I'm happy to be a colleague with you. And don't me just, with you. Thank you. So don't just age, engage. Every two weeks here on Tuesday at two o'clock. If you're a male here, uh, you probably have noticed that there's some difficulty in urinating. You probably have an enlarged prostate. Most men do. And two weeks from now, we're going to look at a man who had prostate cancer. I say had because he beat it without surgery. Want to find out what he did? Two weeks from now, friend. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.